very brief introduction. Uh, this is uh, Haley Fu from NME. Uh, uh, I will host today's webinar and I will uh, be the uh, project manager for this uh, uh, project. Uh, this is phase two um, on the conformal coating evaluation for improved environmental uh, protection. In fact, this project focuses on the uh, test development on the, um, to evaluate the performance uh, of conformal coating. Um, we finished uh, phase one uh, in last uh, December. Um, so now we are open for the second phase. Um, for today, we have uh, the project chair uh, PJ Sun from IBM. He will uh, present the uh, project and uh, also um, we have co-chair from Chen Xu uh, from Nokia Bell Labs. Uh, so for today's uh, agenda, uh, we'll introduce the project chairs, then um, very briefly uh, introduce the project development process, how the uh, project is established and uh, uh, the steps that we will go through um, to achieve the project goals. Okay? Then uh, we will get to the project briefing um, to in, in introduce uh, the project scope, the previous related work, uh, especially what we accomplished in phase one, because uh, phase two will uh, continue based on uh, phase one uh, achievements. Then the, the timeline uh, will and uh, some preliminary uh, uh, experiment plan for the phase two. Uh, then I will explain uh, how to join the enemy project. <coughs> we will open up for the Q&A. Okay. As said, we will um, please keep uh, uh, your speaker uh, on mute uh, until the end of the presentation um, during the Q&A. Uh, we will share the presentation materials um, and um, um, you can use the chat function to type in, uh, send in your uh, questions or comments. We can go through that at the end. Okay. Hey, um, for the project chairs, uh, Dr. Uh, PJ Sun is from IBM. He's a senior technical staff member. Um, he has uh, over um, 24 years uh, experience in the electronics industry uh, on the uh, metallurgical uh, engineering and uh, the failure analysis of computer power packing and uh, cooling. Um, uh, recently, he has uh, been working on the superconductor uh, manufacturing and the characterization in uh, several years, working on the thin film technology and the electro, uh, electro migration characterization. He owns uh, 83 patents. So um, he's a master inventor at IBM. Okay. Um, Dr. Uh, Chen Xu is from uh, Nokia Biolabs. He's a distinguished member of technical staff. Uh, he ha has a background in education, uh, in a, for education in um, uh, chemistry, um, engineering, and um, uh, physical chemistry uh, uh, in Germany. And um, he owns um, over 100 publications and. Uh, uh, 15 approved or pending patents, and he is uh, active in uh, um, different associations or uh, um, uh, consortiums in the uh, uh, industry. Okay. So for the enemy project, um, actually, um, for if it's a new um, area, typically we start uh, uh, idea. Uh, that's a concept of a. Uh, a project, then uh, we will build the, the project to define what the project is, the scope is and uh, what's the objective, and then detail the um, plan, uh, plan the uh, resource that will be needed associated uh, uh, with the project, the tasks, and uh, um, to achieve the goals, okay, and to define the timetable um, in the uh, in also very important during the planning uh, and definition um, to communicate with the industry, um, uh, get the input uh, to make sure that our project is uh, properly defined. Uh, 
it can be achieved, uh, accomplished um, with the support uh, because of our consortia uh, project, we need the industry to contribute and uh, participate. Okay. Um, so uh, now we are uh, we finished uh, the planning. We have uh, uh, two documents. Um, one is a statement of work. That's a project plan. Then we have a project statement um, agreement. Uh, it defines um, uh, the policy, the rules for the project management, how we handle the resource uh, and the data management, etc. So now we are actually at the fourth step, uh, the launch. It means that so we uh, open for project sign up and um, um, we communicate with uh, uh, people who are interested in this uh, topic and invite them to join if they see there is a value or you know would like to work together with uh, others in the industry. Okay. Um, we for this project we have a sign up due date. Um, at the end of April, um, 30th of April. Um, after that, um, the project team will uh, be finalized. Then uh, the project participants, they, they will uh, uh, review again uh, the experimental plan, um, all the details, uh, just to um, reconfirm <clears throat> uh, and reach uh, get aligned with the project uh, the scope, uh, the schedule, resource, etc. Okay. Uh, with that, we will uh, move to the uh, execution to uh, conduct the task uh, plan and uh, accomplish uh, project goals, okay. get the deliverables. Uh, um, sometimes it can be white paper or um, uh, presentations, some uh, output data. OK, uh, with that, um, after the project accomplished, we will typically organize uh, end of project webinars to report out what's the uh, learning and uh, uh, achievements, um, uh, what will be you know, shared uh, with the industry, what can be you know, recommended to the industry. So we uh, um, do this kind of um, deployment during the uh, closure. Um, and uh, properly archive the project data, etc. So for the <clears throat> participation during the planning, uh, uh, the concept to uh, planning stage, it's open for the industry participation uh, to make sure that uh, we have uh, sufficient communication, get inputs, get comments. Um, uh, so the project will benefit to the mem benefit to the members, uh, the industry, and. Uh, after launch, uh, the project uh, uh, will be limited uh, uh, to the committed members. It means who signed the uh, project statement, uh, uh, committed to the, the project uh, uh, terms um, on the uh, mar project management policies, uh, uh, resource uh, data sharing, etc. Okay, there is a legal framework uh, behind that okay, to, to make sure uh, uh, this type of consortial activity can be uh, managed properly. So that's a, a brief introduction, uh, explanation on how enemy project is organized. Okay. I hope it's helpful. Okay, uh, I mentioned the two documents. Um, <coughs> the SOW, it uh, describes the plan, um, uh, the scope of the project, the background, um, what would be the benefits, the impact to the uh, business or industry, uh, the required resource, um, the materials, uh, process, um, what's the task and the schedule. Then um, the project statement, uh, that this document will need to be signed by the participating companies to make sure that uh, we get the the resource and uh, uh, contribution committed uh, and uh, also uh, relevant to role, project management roles are respected. Okay. Uh, it will require enemy membership um, to participate in the project. Okay. So then with that, I will uh, pass to uh, PJ to introduce the project. Thank you. Okay. 
Yeah, sure. go ahead. Right. So this project, uh, basically we are developing a test for conformal coding characterization. <clears throat> uh, and the idea is that uh, today, the conventional test methods, the way they work is that you take a hard piece of hardware and then you coat the circuit board hardware with conformal coding, and then you see how long, what is the mean time to failure of the coated components? So for example, a typical ones are surface mount resistors. You can measure their resistance. You coat them with a the conformal coating and you, you subject them to dry sulfur environment at 105 degrees centigrade. There is no moisture in the chamber. The only corrosive gas is sulfur. And it takes a year or more for this test to complete. Uh, and uh, so the problem with this test is that the temperature is too high, there is no moisture, and the test takes too long. So our objective is to have a test that takes less than a week and under environmental conditions very similar to those in the field. We don't want to go above 30, 40 degrees centigrade. Uh, we want to stay in that range and our environment does not have to be very corrosive. And like I said, we want the test to be done in one week. So that's the objective of the test. May I please have the next page? <clears throat> so this is an example of the conventional method used today. Uh, so this, this result is uh, from many different companies. The com they had a consortium and they conducted this test. So what this test is that they have test circuit boards on which they mount 0603 surface mount resistors and they wire them up so they can measure their resistance. And they put these, these, these test vehicles. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. And you conformally coat the resistors with various conformal coatings, and then you put them in this corrosive flowers of sulfur chamber at 105 degrees centigrade, and there's no moisture. Uh, the only gas is sulfur. Now you notice this is a viable plot. <clears throat> so vertical axis is failures percent, horizontal is mean time to failure. So you see that the control which is blue is lasting longer than the conformally coded uh, components. Now this is not right. So this is happening because of the high temperature. So this is not really telling you what will happen at 30, 40 degrees centigrade. So basically this is giving erroneous results because of the very high temperature of the test. So our test that we, we have developed uh, through phase one, we do the test at 40 degrees centigrade. We also use sulfur gas, but we also include moisture. Next page, please. So these, this is the team we have had for phase one. We have uh, engineers and technicians from IBM. We have Nokia, Celestica, Picosun, Sun, and of course, Dynamic. Really next, okay. So this is the test vehicle. <clears throat> so on the right side, you see a, a test circuit board, and there is a serpentine thin film. So this particular one is silver, it's, it's 800 nanometers thick, and uh, the silver thin film is connected for a four-point probe measurement. And those connectors you see on the top and the bottom, they're just so that we can connect to the outside world. Now, th this structure is showing two thin films one on top of each other, but through our uh, our work, we have realized we really don't need the bottom thin film. So we have simplified the structure now through various testing. 
where we only have one thin film. Whereas these pictures are showing two silicon thin films on silicon dyes. Uh, anyway, so what we do is we take these 800 nanometers thick films of copper and silver and we conformally coat them with the coating to be tested. And then we expose them to corrosive environment, which is sulfur gas at 40 degrees centigrade. So it's not too corrosive. And we can have whatever moisture, whatever percent RH one needs, we can include that in our test. Uh, we measure the corrosion rate of the coated thin films, and we use that. So, so the thin films will corrode, they'll become thinner, and the electrical resistance will increase. So by measuring the electrical resistance, we can determine the corrosion rate of the films, and we compare the corrosion rate of the coated film to the uncoated metal films. So that's how we characterize the conformal coating. If the conformal coating is perfect, then the uncoated, uh, then the coated film will have zero corrosion. And of course, the uncoated film will corrode. Next page, please. So this is just some pictures of the test setup. Uh, 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 we have in the, in the middle, actually on the top, we are showing the oven. And inside that, the oven is there only to control the temperature. And we have on the left side, we have a laptop that is measuring the temperature of the films. On the right side, you can see a laptop which is controlling the potentiostat. So potentiostat is what we use to precisely measure the resistance of the thin films. And in the middle left and middle bottom, are the, you can see the, uh, the our thin films all wired up. And the middle left, you can see a tray that contains a sulfur. So we have sulfur there. And we also have, uh, we also have a saturated salt solution to control the humidity. Actually, the top right in the middle is a saturated salt solution. So you can see lumps of salt, the white salt, which is telling us solution is saturated. And the yellow on the outside, that's sulfur. That's the flowers of sulfur. And the middle right are, one is copper thin film, one is silver thin film. And on the bottom right, we have a silver thin film to which we glue a thermocouple which is only uh, two mils, 0 0.002 inch thick. So it's very fine uh, thermocouple to measure the temperature of the film. Temperature is important, uh, so we do we do measure the temperature of the film. But the sulfur gas at 40 degrees centigrade will be 0.15 ppm, <clears throat> and 50 degrees C will be 30. It'll be 0.3 ppm. So we we plan to use only 40 degrees centigrade from now on. Yeah. And this particular chamber, the air was not circulated. So we're considering putting a, a rotary device in there to gently circulate the air. So we'll be doing that in our next second phase. Next page, please. So th these are the results of phase one. And this this chart shows bare silver and copper film corrosion. So the black dots and the black lines are for uh, uh, actually this, this chart is showing everything, but the black lines and the red lines are for for copper and silver corrosion rates. So you can see the rates are high. Uh, and that's what's expected because they're not coated, they're bare. So it's okay. and, and these other dots are for uh, for, for coated hardware. So, so basically, so why do we have four charts? The top left is 40 degrees centigrade, 15% RH. 
Uh, the one to the right is 50 degrees C, 31 percent RH. The bottom left is 50 degrees C, 15 percent RH, and the bottom right is 50 degrees C, 75 percent RH. So we can control the RH to whatever level one wishes. And you can see over here that the RH is not making too much of a difference. There is some difference. The temperature makes most of the difference. You can see the 40 degrees C has less corrosion rate than the 50 degrees C because the sulfur content is higher at 50 degrees C. So next speech, please. So this, this is, uh, we are just showing one example. Here we're showing acrylic coatings. So you see how the acrylic coatings uh, are protecting the copper well. The red lines are copper. So you see the red lines are much lower than the black lines. So the black lines are silver corrosion. So for some reason, acrylic is not protecting the silver as well as the copper. So I, I forgot to mention these charts are vertical axis is corrosion rate on a log scale. So you have to be careful. The little difference is big vertical axis. For example, the chart on the top left, it shows almost two orders of magnitude difference between the corrosion rate of silver and copper. Uh, and uh, again, these four charts are at 40 degrees centigrade and 50 degrees centigrade at different relative humidities. You know. So a, ch a chart like this, so each chart takes about, uh, let's say if you take the top left, that, that's a five day test. So in other words, in five days, you can decide what temperature and humidity you'd like for your test. We can complete the test in five days. And notice we get results as a function of temperature, not just one temperature. Like in conventional testing, it's 105 degrees centigrade, but we can test at more reasonable temperatures. Now, you might be wondering, I have, let's say the top left is 40 degrees centigrade, 15% RH, right? <coughs> so, but the axis is also temperature. So the bottom of the is the temperature in the chamber. Horizontal axis, that one over temperature, that temperature is the temperature of the thin film. So thin films can be heated, uh, whereas we can keep the air at 40 degrees centigrade, but the thin films and conformal coating can be at different temperatures. So when we keep the chamber at 40 degrees centigrade, the PPM of sulfur is 0.15. So the, the corrosive nature of the of the chamber air is fixed, and we can change the temperature of the conformal coating. So this way we can study the performance of the conformal coating as a function of temperature, uh, and uh, the environment stays at 0.15 ppm. So that so that's that's the power of this technique uh, that we can vary the environment humidity and relative and the temperatures that we can vary the sulfur concentration and relative humidity. Of course, we keep it fixed during the test and we can conduct the test at different conformal coating temperatures. So, and also the, the one reason we like to do that is from the slope of the curve, you can get an idea of what is the mechanism, what's the activation energy of the process. So from a scientific point of view, we'd like to know the slope of the curve. Next page, please. So these are what the, uh, the samples look like uh, at the end of the test. So the very left top is bare silver, and we can see it's growing silver sulfide needles. And that, that is expected. We do have, even in components like surface mount resistors, the, the silver corrodes and forms the silver sulfide needles. On the bottom, 
we have silicone coating over silver and there are no needles. And those uh, black dots are porosity in the silicon conformal coating. So you can see the 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 silk the silver has darkened, so silicon didn't protect the silver that well. Uh, now the next column ALD over silver. Uh, so notice that the ALD over silver. The silver is nice and sh uh, shiny. So the ALD is atomic layer deposition. So that's like a ceramic oxide coating on silver that, that gives us very good protection. And then below that is acrylic over silver. As I already mentioned, acrylic did not protect silver very well. You know? So you can see the, the only coating that protected the silver was the atomic layer deposition. So on the right side, we have copper thin films. So bare copper corroded, you can see. And below that, we have silicone over copper. So silicone also did not protect copper well. So copper corroded under the silicone. But if you look in the top right, the, the ALD over copper gave very, very good protection to the copper. So the atomic layer deposition coating works very well. And then the bottom right, that's copper protected by acrylic, and it gave pretty decent protection. So you can see on this chart that this technique is very, uh, it can differentiate between good, co good conformal coatings and the ones that don't perform so well. So you can see that atomic layer deposition worked very well. Acrylic was OK on copper, but not on silver. And of course, silicon we all know is bad. Silicon doesn't protect the underlying metal. You know. So this uh, technique can differentiate between conformal coatings very well. Next page, please. So in summary, I'll just read the summary. Uh, this study shows that conformal coatings can be characterized by the degree of corrosion protection provided by the coatings as measured by the rates of corrosion of the underlying copper and silver thin films. And the way we measure the co corrosion rates of the underlying thin films is by measuring their resistance. And the test is less than a week compared to a year for conventional means. And the test it does a very good job differentiating between different coatings. So it can differentiate the performance of the different coatings. I think, OK, so the next phase of the project is that this the flower sulfur chamber we have. It's been we've been developing this chamber for last, I think, four years, five years. And it's done very well. <clears throat> this uh, flower sulfur chamber is also used for creep corrosion, and it's it's an excellent test to determine whether your circuit board will suffer creep corrosion in the field or not. So creep corrosion is where the metallization of the circuit board corrodes. Now that's okay, corrosion is fine, but the corrosion product decides to creep on the surface and the corrosion product is often sulfide and the sulfide is a semiconductor but when it has contamination it becomes a conductor so over the last seven eight years because of rojas restriction of hazardous materials uh, we had to make serious changes as you know to the circuit board metallurgy and the and the lead free solder. So as a result, our circuit boards became prone to creep corrosion. So we have been using this uh, INME flower sulfur chamber to test our circuit boards to qualify them to make sure that they don't have creep corrosion in the field. So having said that, the mixed flowing gas chamber is more of an accepted industry standard. So now in this phase of the project, we would like to come. We would like to 
compare the results from the flow of the sulfur chamber to those from the mixed flowing gas chamber. Essentially, we want to prove, hopefully, that the results will be comparable, and therefore you can use the INME F flow of the sulfur chamber, which is only two, three thousand dollars compared to mixed flowing gas, which is much more expensive. Uh, but having said that, mixed flowing gas chamber is well established in the industry, uh, and a lot of companies use that to qualify the products uh, uh, in these in the mixed flowing gas corrosive environment. Now, another thing we'll do in this project is we will refine our flower sulfur chamber by, uh, by circulating the air in the chamber, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Uh, uh, and then we will provide test recommendation guidelines to the industry for both the FOS chamber and the mixed flow and gas test chambers. And lastly, <clears throat> we'd like to explore the a test vehicle that is on circuit boards. So in other words, so one of the weakness of a test is our thin films are planar, the two dimensional. So we would like to develop a three dimensional test vehicle and study its test feasibility. So we, we this is a, uh, we will explore this, so we don't know if we'll succeed or not. You know. Next page, please. So the experiments we'll do in the FOS chamber, we will keep the temperature at 40 degrees centigrade, and the relative humidities will control at 15, 31, and 75. Now, these humidities we get by using saturated salt solutions. For example, 15 degrees C, I think is zinc chloride, saturated salt solution, 31% RH is magnesium chloride, and 75% RH is sodium chloride. So these salts give you very, very stable relative humidity. And the 40 degrees C fixed temperature gives you very stable sulfur concentration. In the mixed flowing gas chamber, we will have uh, sulfur dioxide at 200 ppb, H2S at 1000 ppb, nitrous oxide at 1000 ppb, chlorine at 50 ppb, and we'll keep the temperature 30 degrees centigrade. And again, we'll use the same relative humidities as in the flower sulfur chamber. And our present plan is to test coatings of acrylic now, when I say fluoropolymer, I don't really mean fluoropolymer, but it's some there is fluorine in the polymer, but I'm told it's not really fluoropolymer. And then we'll also use a we'll also have atomic layer deposition, and we will we'll be passing different currents through the films. So this is how we get different temperatures. So 100, 200, 300. Uh, and then back to 100 milliamps. So we get like 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, and back to 40. And notice the relative humidity also changes because on the sample, when you heat, when you heat a sample in air, the relative humidity surrounding the sample decreases. Just like if you take a hot towel and you take a cold towel, the hot towel will dry faster than the cold towel because the relative humidity surrounding the hot towel is a lot less. So. so you notice the test duration is five days. Uh, and uh, so the reason is 5.32 days is because we are, we are working in seconds. So 100,000 seconds, 200,000 seconds. So when you divide by uh, 3,600, 3, you get these strange days, you know. Uh, next page is, so this is just the schedule. We hope to complete the project in eight months. Uh, our samples, our test vehicles are already prepared. They're ready to go to be conformally coded. Uh, so we are all geared up. And the testing 
will be done, the efforts will be done in IBM uh, and a couple of other places, and the mixed flow and gas done test will be done in Nokia and Murray Hill. Next page, please. Thanks, Haley. Haley, you want to take over? We can't hear you. She's on mute. Okay, okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so uh, about uh, how to join. Thank, thank you, PJ, and the introduction of the project. Um, on how to joining, uh, we have uh, signed up due dates on April 30th. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the enemy membership is required to join the project. Um, uh, if you are already an enemy member, uh, the, actually the steps is quite simple. Uh, you just uh, download the project statement. Uh, you can review the SOW. Um, the project statements. Um, uh, need to be signed by the representative of the participants for a single company. You, you, you may have uh, multiple people joining in the project, but um, the signature can be just uh, from one uh, uh, person on behalf of the uh, company. And then, then there is a second uh, signature needed from the manager um, that's uh, approved the participation and support um, uh, the resource or commitment to the project. Okay, um, just send the scanned copy of the signed uh, project statement to to an enemy, and uh, we um, Grace Omani, uh, she's the uh, vice president for technical and project operations. She she will review and sign uh, to for the acceptance approval uh, of the participation. Okay. Um, if you are not an uh, enemy member, uh, certainly you can uh, contact me or any um, enemy uh, staffs uh, uh, in the region uh, uh, to discuss about the membership. Then uh, that's uh, uh, the steps that uh, we will require for the project to sign up. Okay. Um, I, I will very briefly show the document. Okay, can you see this Word document? Yes. Okay, so it's this is a document with, uh, how it looks like. Um, this is called the project statement. Um, then the, typically the company, they fill in their name as a participating member, um, agrees to join this project and carry out the tasks, etc. And if there is uh, some uh, IP, uh, you know, some uh, background technology if uh, that the company will uh, disclose in conjunction with the project they should uh, just uh, take um, does if there is not um, you just uh, select it does not okay um, typically for the enemy project we work in the um, pretty competitive uh, uh, topics and um, it's up to the uh, Project participating companies, they decide if they want to share and what to share. Okay, it's not mandatory. Okay, it's their own call. Um, as I mentioned, uh, to approve for this project system, it's uh, two steps. Um, need a company participant to sign it and um, uh, also uh, to get a management approval. Okay, for the following uh, items, just uh, uh, about the uh, commitment to the resource, uh, joining the project meetings, uh, carry out the tasks. In fact, for this project, because it's a continuous project and um, we had uh, uh, several team members, they already working in team uh, phase one. Uh, definitely, we would welcome new members and it's open for new uh, companies to join in the second phase. Um, uh, the, the resource for the project is relatively secured, you know, um, since it's, the team is uh, has been work uh, together for a while. Um, so, as the PG mentioned, we will uh, have the FOS test done uh, 
at IBM and uh, flow, uh, mixed flowing gas test at uh, Nokia Bell Labs. So um, the, the coatings typically will uh, be supported by the uh, material suppliers, and um, we may have uh, either the suppliers uh, or some EMS co company to help with the uh, coating uh, to uh, to coat the coupons. Then uh, as a projection of this um, project, uh, we, we didn't really plan any um, monetary cost. So we consider that uh, the resource needed is pretty covered by the uh, 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 participating members. So just in case there is anything need to be purchased, uh, that cost will be shared uh, um, by the participating members. You can go through the, the details of this document. So also we mentioned about uh, material donation. Um, if there is a uh, non-member, they donate the material, and uh, certainly if the, it's adopted by the projected team members in the experiment, then um, we will uh, acknowledge the contribution, but uh, for the non-member uh, contribution, uh, that they cannot really uh, join the project uh, as the other members to have the same access can, and uh, uh, to make decisions on the project. Uh, so that's uh, just uh, some rules on the project management. OK, and uh, also for the data the information sharing. Um, OK, so basically the, the all the data generated by the project is owned by the uh, participating members. They need to agree and uh, uh, approve uh, any uh, publications or you know reports to the outside the, the team. Okay. That's uh, uh, some terms that we defined uh, for the project and it's aligned with the enemy uh, IP policy, the project management policies. Okay, so I think that's uh, uh, how it works uh, with the project statement. We also have a table to collect the input uh, if the company they are going to pro provide the uh, intent and contribution it just uh, uh, mark this uh, cell to indicate what's their contribution okay uh, after the sign up period we will review the resource metrics just to make sure all the resource is covered and uh, uh, who will do what that's the first step after the launch okay I said the last page is uh, for the signature for the project participants and uh, the management approval. Then for the enemy, there is acceptance approval. OK, I think that's uh, what I would like to cover, uh, explain for the uh, joining. Okay. I think that's uh, all we have. Uh, we will open up for the question questions. Any? Any questions from people on the call? You can unmute yourself to speak out, or you can uh, tap in in using the chat. Okay. Let me just check if there is any. Not from the chat. Uh, any questions from the audience? You can unmute yourself. One problem with the teams is uh, the host cannot uh, unmute participants. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you have to uh, unmute yourself if you s speak. Anybody has the questions? Or you have suggestions to the project? Yeah, the detailed uh, the SOW and the project statement you can download from the NME web page. Uh, 
in fact, when you register the webinar, um, you you in on that web page, that's a project page. <coughs> Are there any questions? We need a last call for questions. Okay, so if not, I think we will close today's session. If you think of anything, you can contact me. Um, so we will uh, close the sign up. Uh, by the end of the month and uh, start the project uh, in May. Okay, so I think with that, uh, uh, Chen or PJ, you have an additional comment? No, just that uh, this is uh, this technique we have been developing for, for many years uh, and it's taken a long time to get to this stage. Uh, so the, and the technique is pretty well developed at this point. So let's suppose uh, somebody wants to test conformal coatings. Uh, for them to develop this technique on their own will take about two, three years to do. So by, by joining this uh, task force, you save probably it's a minimum half a million dollars in test development. If let's suppose your company wants to do this test and you want to start from scratch, think about two years test development and maybe half a million dollars. You know. Yeah. And in fact, uh, yeah, the, the chamber design, I think uh, even from the earlier uh, crude corrosion test development uh, project. Right. Yeah. Then so the chamber design took about three years. The conformal coding test development took two years. Uh, and we didn't go into all the details of how we control the chamber. We so there are a lot more details we have not covered. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's an opportunity uh, to work together. And uh, if you are interested in set up your own test. I think that's a, a good opportunity and uh, maybe that's also a chance to get into the details of how this test is, is working and uh, then you can make your decision if you will adopt it uh, by your own. Yeah. OK. I think uh, with that, uh, we will close today's session. Um, thank you for joining and thank you, PJ. Thank you. Thank you. Ten. Yeah. Have Good a nice day. Nice evening. Bye bye.